February 5, 1953, the O'Ree County News and the Laura Sentinel, South Carolina. County Man Sees Saucer by W. Horace Carter. All over the United States, reports have been made of the sighting of various unusual objects in the air, now generally referred to as flying saucers, and just such a thing was reliably reported by Lloyd C. Booth of the Poplar Adrian community of Ory County this week. Booth is a 29-year-old ex-serviceman, a member of the Poplar Methodist Church, and of exceedingly high character throughout the area in which he is known. There is no doubt in the minds of those who know him well, including ministers, that he is by nature truthful and of high moral integrity. What he saw was no hoax, and he had ample time to study it in great detail. Booth runs a community store and service station on Highway 701, about eight miles north of Conway. He usually keeps his business open until about 11, which he did on the night of January 29, last Thursday. He lives with his parents a mile or so from the store, and after closing the station, he drove home and arrived there about 11.15. His mother had left his supper prepared for him as usual, so he put on the coffee pot and sat down to read the paper while it was heating. A moment later, he heard one of his father's mules neighing at the barn, a few minutes more, and a second mule began causing a commotion, a mule that is not easily disturbed. Then, at the same moment, the chickens and a pen of ducks began squawking, and Booth, sensing something awry, grabbed a 22 caliber pistol and went outside to investigate. He was particularly anxious to investigate, because the day before, a cow of his had died suddenly and veterinarian diagnosed her cause of death as poisoning. Portions of the cow were cut up and sent off for laboratory study to determine what type poisoning. Thus, Booth thought perhaps some more stock was being tampered with by someone. When he was outside the house, he went directly to the barn and, seeing nothing, he went around behind the building. By this time, it was near midnight, and a full moon lit up the sky. The eclipse of the moon, on the same night, had already completely vanished. From his vantage point there, he looked up above the top of the pine trees, and there was the strange object that at first frightened him, but never kept him from fully investigating. The object was almost still, like it was drifting at a pace lower than the fast walk of a human. It was only some ten feet above the treetops and easily visible. It was making a very low humming noise, barely detectable. Booth, realizing he was perhaps getting the best view in history of the long-discussed flying saucer, yelled loud and long for someone at the house, about two hundred yards away. But the late hour had them soundly asleep, and he was not able to arouse them. But I still wanted to know more about this thing that was hovering around our barn, and with my gun in hand, I went directly into the woods, easily catching up with the object. I walked under it, around it, and viewed it from all sides. It was about 24 feet long and about 12 feet across, was a light grayish color, and was lit up on the inside. Two places in the front resembled strange cockpits and were glassed over. I could see the light inside, but could see no object in there. The back also had something resembling a cockpit with a stained glass over it. Light was coming through this section, but I could not see through it, Booth said. The object was about eight or ten feet deep, the front sloped upward at the base at an angle of about 60 degrees, and the back was sloped upward at an angle of 40 or 50 degrees. The sides came straight down from the top for maybe four or five feet, and then sloped outward and joined the base 
at about a 45 degree angle, Booth said. The object obviously was novel in construction and gave an overall streamlined effect, something like half an egg cut from end to end. Underneath the saucer was something resembling a retractable wheel, with half the wheel, possibly three feet across, extending below the base in a crescent shape. There were no markings anywhere on it because I looked hard for some identification, Booth said. There was no visible means of support for the object. It had no propeller. There were no exhaust fumes showing no vapor trail, and I could detect no unusual odor. It simply sat there and drifted along as I ran around and around it, getting just as good a look as I could. I watched it for at least 20 minutes, maybe as much as 30 minutes. Despite Booth's yelling for someone to come and see the object, he aroused no one, and in desperation, after this length of time, he fired his pistol straight up at the saucer, at a distance of about 75 feet. I heard the bullet hit the object. It made a metallic sound and bounced off. I fired again, but did not hear the bullet hit. A bare instant later, the object began making considerably more noise, like a large electric motor, and took off at a high rate of speed at about a 65 degree angle. It kept that same course until it was completely out of sight, said Booth. He pointed out that the noise it made when it took off could have been heard easily at his house if someone had been listening for it, although it was by no means a loud noise like an aircraft of conventional design would have made. He also debunked any notion that it was a helicopter or any other known type aircraft. I have been in helicopters and been in and around almost every type plane. This was none of them and didn't even faintly resemble any of them, he said. Booth said that he even was reluctant to tell anyone about the object, even his family, because of the widespread bunking of those who have reported seeing mysterious objects. However, his family had heard the shot and he told them about what he had seen. He also told Reverend Elwell Jones, Baptist minister in Horry County. And Reverend Jones said, I have known Lloyd Booth all my life. We are about the same age and grew up together. When he says he saw something, he did. And that's the opinion of dozens of Ori citizens who have known Booth for years. He is a Christian man who doesn't drink or misrepresent anything said one of his neighbors. And, as a finishing touch, the cow poisoning entered the affair. At least 18 cows have died mysteriously in Ori County within the last few weeks. All have died instantaneously. Some never even kicked. All have died from poisoning of a caustic nature. There have been no early symptoms. The cows simply have fallen over and have died in an instant. Two cows owned by Henry Anderson died of poisoning less than a mile from the sighted object on the very night that Booth saw it. Both cows were milked and fed the evening before, but were stone dead at milking time the next morning. Other cows have died the same way from Myrtle Beach through Red Hill and into the Adrian and Poplar sections, and the greatest number of hogs have died in the area in history. Some farmers have lost whole herds. One man alone reported losing 75. They did not die of cholera, all of which might add to the mystery. What did Booth see? Why was it there? Did it have anything to do with the death of Ori livestock? 